Hi, this is Ryan with BudgetTattooing.com and today we're going to be talking about mixing colors and asking you, are you doing that right? Okay. Alright, now that's over with mixing colors. I see a lot of people mixing colors that they don't know what they're doing. Um, to, to start this, let's, let's identify a few different ways that you can mix colors, right? One, we have in cap, which is great. Two is in skin. And three is in tube. So let's define this first, right? In cap mixing is where we take one color and we mix it into another and we create a new color. Really, really simple, right? The in skin is where we take one color, we put it into skin. <laughs> Fuck it. And we take another one and we put it into the skin. Thank you for your support and helping our community, people. I hope that you're not the angry ones. Um, so when we're putting these two into the skin, it's this, this mixing color is going to determine tone and value of these things. The first color that we end up putting in, if this is one and this is two, is going to be able to saturate the skin more effectively, especially like when it's at the same session. So our first is going to be our base. Let's be base would be one, right? And then our second one, when it comes in, it's going to tint that color. And this happens because the skin is is fixed right it can only hold so much pigment and when we first put it into the skin with our first pass whatever we're doing it's our concentration levels are going to be the highest because we aren't fighting inflammation we're not fighting damaged tissue we're not fighting anything else so it's going to be able to be established first anything that we put on top of that is going to have to mix in with it so make sure that you're doing that if you want to have let's say that this is red and this is i don't know violet when we put in our red first not even when we start getting into the more complex things here in a second. The red is going to be able to establish first and we're going to end up tinting it with a violet. So we're going to end up cooling it out a little bit, right? If we do our violet first and then our red, we're going to heat that violet up. So it's going to change that tint. And you got to make sure that you pay attention to how those ones go in. Uh, the third one is in tube. I always love mixing in tube. There's a few drawbacks to that though. If we have our tube tip here, whoop, and we put one color in, and then uh, dip, and we dip into the second one. With the machine running, it can mix naturally in the reservoir, and then we have output of color X into the skin, right? <clears throat> this is great, especially when you're doing like large swaths of color and you want variations in your tone. You don't have to dispense 900 colors and do a bunch of butt color edging, right? You can just literally map, fan over top of everything, and create really even and smooth blends that look more natural because there's more variation inside of it. Um, this takes a lot of skill to master, but starting out, especially if you're using like tones, like if you're working from a blue to a green, so it's along the same like values in our, our visible light spectrum, right? Ultraviolet, infrared over here. Um, then we know that we're gonna be able to blend these because we're just doing a reduction of values or additive values to create a more broad, I'm gonna get way too technical. We're gonna make these colors blend much easier. <laughs> So that's, that's really important to do uh, when you're first starting out. Only do light colors in tube. Now, when you're doing these light colors in tube, if you're constantly dipping, you have to try to make sure that you're paying attention to the gunk build that's going on, right? The more time that you're going back and forth in this, one, you're gonna be tinting the cups that are in here if you're not cleaning your tip off effectively, and two, you're gonna get a lot of residue built up in the back of that reservoir, especially if we're running it without running it into the skin for longer. It's gonna keep mixing and drying and crusting in the back of that. So if you're using cartridges or bar in tube, um, then you're going to want to take those things apart usually every two to three hours and literally like clean in the reservoir. If you've got a Q-tip, you can clean up in there, get it back out, and it'll increase the flowability that you got as well as like make sure you're not going to get so much dirtiness to get into it, especially if you hit white at the end. So that's, that's the initial bit with just mixing colors, right? Um, a lot of people will only do like maybe one or two. Uh, not a lot of people do into, but it's a really, really good way, especially if you're uh, like a big walk-in guy or girl, person, non-gendered, anyone who's in there. Uh, if you're doing that work, um, it can make it more speedy because you're not having to spend a ton of time mixing. Uh, if you are going to do it in cap, one easy way to mix in cap is get your two colors out, get a needle bar, right? Loop end down, dip in one, dip in the other, and spin it between your fingers. It's a little paint mixer. A whole lot of fun that way. <laughs> That's easy.
All right, so let's let's get into the heavier stuff here. So when we're mixing colors, since now we already know how we can do it in different ways, right? Um, what we're gonna start doing is thinking about predispersed colors. So we have a bottle of color one and a bottle of color two. Can they even be mixed together? So there's a few things we need to think about, right? One is gonna be the white content. It has to be the same value of white. So when they make whites, and they add it to colors, in some instances, the particle sizes of the white may be different sizes. And this is because of the different sizes that are dispersed at, they interact with light differently. While one side may be able to interact with and, and refract out a specific wavelength of light like a red value, or at least isolate that refraction to a section of that visible light, uh, another one may not do the same. It may be in a different shift, right? This one may only shift on the, the more energetic side. <clears throat> so I know this seems really complex, but whites are not just white normally. They can be dispersed to isolate individual colors and allow them through. We use white as like titanium dioxide specifically at different dispersions as coverings for various things, right? You can use it as like an auto paint thing. They can layer it at a certain particle size <clears throat> that'll actually make the colors appear more vibrant. And if you were to use a different particle size, it would actually mat it out. And that's because those wavelengths are being allowed through at different values, rates, speeds, all that other stuff. So when, we, when we're looking at our white content, inside of it, if we have a tinted white color like a pink, mixing a pink with a fuchsia, if it's going to be anywhere on this visible light spectrum, it may not work well, right? The whites may actually end up because they're not, they're restricting the total amount of light that's there. It's reducing some of that total quality, uh, yeah, light that we're actually trying to get to mix together. It's because we're isolating these, these pigments. Now, our, our pigments that we have nowadays are, well, I call it just a digital palette, but it's a CMYK palette, right? CMYK is cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Well, that's not a very good K, is it? Um, and so these, this color palette, or this profile, works by reducing available light through absorption and refraction, right? If we have a molecule of pigment <clears throat> that is gonna be red, I'm using a lot of red today, what we're gonna have is white light coming into it, right? Some of this white light is gonna be absorbed, some of it is gonna be refracted out, and some of it is gonna be reflected. <clears throat> These wavelengths together, right, are gonna be the ones that we actually see. But this red is gonna be manufactured that inside of that visible light spectrum, it's only taking a very, very, very small slice <clears throat> and allowing it to pass through. There may still be other spectrums that are allowed to pass through through that refraction, right? But whatever that is that's left, that's the only sections inside of maybe this color, uh, visible color spectrum that you can actually utilize. And so it's, it's almost acting like a black where it's absorbing a bunch of other stuff. So if we're trying to mix two colors together and one of them is an absorptive color, right? was absorbative uh, and one of them is more of like a reflective color what's going to happen is when you mix these together it's going to mute out and it's not going to be as vibrant so the white is automatically a big thing if you see colors that are mixed with white that are predispersed leave them alone and don't mix them if we're seeing base colors or concentrates that are coming in, we'll be able to mix some of them together, but they may not work more effectively together than, than you would think. It's not just like I take color X and mix it with a palette and it's fine. The actual vibrancy of the tattoo may be affected long term, especially when these pigments start to break down. So <clears throat> when we're mixing them, now we're past the white content on this stuff, right? The other thing we're gonna be seeing is the light fastness of it. So various colors have different light fastness. Light fastness. This is, if we have a timeline from tattoo until death, right? Which should be somewhere off in the future. Certain colors, like namely like orange, right? Is gonna be affected by the environment much more suddenly than we'd say a purple. So when we're thinking about the light fastness in, in real life, the colors that we put in, especially if we're mixing them, may end up pulling out faster than others, like a yellow, right? If we have a yellow blended off a of purple, which you can do, uh, without making it brown, and they're side by side with something, one of these is not gonna be, you know, 30 years down the line as visible as the other. Now, if we mix them together in a cap and we make a brown with it, what's gonna happen is, down the road, that yellow is going to fade out before the purple, and then we're going to end up with a very purpley, 
brown, right? If we're mixing orange and yellow together to make like a creamsicle color, that orange is gonna fade out very, very quickly and we're gonna end up with a very, very, very faint yellow three to five years down the road. So the light fastness should automatically start cueing you into how these things are gonna be mixed, right? And it doesn't matter if it's in cap, in skin, or in tube. It doesn't really matter. The light fastness is totally gonna to dictate what those things are gonna look like long term. Last one. <clears throat> I'm gonna drink tea, but I'll just keep it on. My throat's getting sore. I've done a bunch of these videos. Anyways. <laughs> Last thing we're gonna think about when we're mixing colors is particle size, right? So this is, this is just like niche minutia shit. If you're trying to make um, like custom bottles for each one of your clients, right? Like they want a very specific color. You're doing a large scale project. You're like, okay, I'll buy these eight ounces. I'll mix them down and I'll have, you know, like this is Jessica's color, right? And we know that we're gonna be using this as a base in the tone of the background and it just has to stay the same. The particle size is actually gonna also dictate how these things work flowability wise. If you take like brands, the surfactants that are added are based on how the particles actually fit in there and the more that you have of something in them uh, and the particles are different, it can change the performance of how the fluid actually flows. So if you're gonna have something that you have to use a lot uh, and its performance is decreased, that end up not only like with it saturating into the skin, right? If we have like a fucking, that's a fat ink cap. Um, we, we can get a lot of settling. We can get stuff that's gonna become a lot thicker, right? So it just ends up becoming like a mucky mush. And if we're trying to take these things and mix it with additional colors to create tints, those colors are gonna be massively affected, not only on how they deposit into the skin, right? Larger pigment particles are gonna have a harder time getting deep, while smaller ones are easily gonna be able to fall, and that affects aging. I know that's complex. I started talking fast there. So <clears throat> realistically, unless you're mixing stuff like this, you don't have to really worry about particle size. But if you are mixing in tube, especially, you can get uneven blends, which can create really neat effects. Um, if you have stuff that's, you know, big old particles next to smaller ones and you do a mix, you can end up, as you're running it in the skin, it can slowly tint moving further and faster out, right? So you end up with a dark to a light that's slowly just happening as you fill. And as it's picking up more exudate from the skin and thins it out, it keeps that constant consistency. Like this is some really heavy shit, but um, it's fun. Uh, most people aren't gonna do this though. So things to think about when you're <laughs> mixing your colors. I honestly don't think a lot of people are doing it right. Uh, and if we were just to back it up to the most one-on-one stuff, you can mix it a bunch of different ways. Is that a good way to end this? I don't know. Anyways, um, that's that. Uh, if you need me to do more in depth on one of these things, hit me up in the comments, do what I can. Past that, thanks for watching. Uh, you can be a member of the show or channel. Uh, for a buck a month, we say thank you to you at the end of our things, thank you. Uh, and that's about it. <laughs> Maybe in the future we'll have custom content, but right now we're just doing this because it's a busy year. Anyways, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you again later. Oh, 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 oh.